let me share with you some tips about making authentic videos. Uh, someone asked me about um, what I would do at the beginning of a video or the end of the video, what I suggest, and kind of any other tips about making videos. So uh, first, I want to say that I, I, I have so much to say about this, and I've created an entire course called Authentic Video Creation that comes with a private Facebook group where you can practice and post as many videos as you want and get some encouragement there. But anyway, that's beside the point. I just want to give you uh, whatever is coming coming to me right now off the top of my head in the kind of a shorter answer. So yes, the intro of the video is the most important part because um, you know basically the most important part of your video is the first 30 seconds. And actually that's not true. Even more important than the first 30 seconds is the first 10 seconds. And even more important than the first 10 seconds is the first three seconds. So you could see what I'm where I'm going with. It's really, you know, so first of all, authentic videos, um, since you are learning from me about making videos, I don't teach it the same as everyone else, right? Everyone else, there's lots of video advice, video making advice on YouTube, of course. So if you search video, video making tips, you'll get tons and tons of great YouTube videos. But typically, the, the advice out there is about different ways to get attention and like um, editing techniques and things that basically assume that your viewer is constantly wanting to stop watching your video. <laughs> and you have to like constantly get their attention every three seconds, every five seconds, every 10 seconds. It has to be choppy and, you know, has to be like, yeah, so, so interesting. I think that's true if you are, you have the strategy of building a mass audience. Like you want to be like Mr. Beast is very famous on YouTube for having millions of followers. And he, he makes some of his videos cost millions of dollars to make. It's like, it's like he's a movie company, but he's really a YouTuber that just kind of started and started. And then he's like, you know, studying uh, YouTube retention graphs and seeing, oh, people dropped off at the three seconds, at five seconds there because I used that word. And I'm not going to use that word in the future. Therefore, I try a different word. And you can, of course, in my video uh, making course, I actually do show you the video retention graphs and how to study that. So I, I teach you a little bit about that. But let me just say that the reason why you're you're watching my videos is because you want to also make authentic videos that maybe you don't maybe you find video editing to be too much work. I do, as you can notice, I, I don't I basically don't edit any of my videos. I say basically because when I make a Facebook live, I do immediately afterwards trim off the first, you know, two seconds or three seconds when I'm going in my live right now. I, I trim that part out, but that's the only video editing I do. Okay, I'm sorry. One other video editing I do is when I repurpose my uh, my older videos. Sometimes I will I will use cap wing to put a lower third. I'll, I'll put um, subtitles that show up uh, no matter if you turn subtitles on you'll see I'm, st I'm starting to do that or a lower third is very easy it takes me five minutes to do that kind of editing just a lower third is basically having words having having a static having something below that's you know and that's just the, the topic of the video you know it just stayed there so it's very easy to edit but anyway long story short I basically don't edit my videos and I just speak and the reason why I do this and the reason why I teach this method it's because one, it's a lot less work and therefore you can create a lot more content. But number two, most of the people I'm, I'm teaching and, and coaching are fellow knowledge sharers or transformational coaches or healers or mentors. And I think the most powerful, important skill um, that cannot it will be a long time before it gets replaced by robots and, and artificial intelligence. I think clever editing can be replaced by artificial intelligence before long, but what cannot be replaced is learning how to authentically and powerfully speak on camera. Because no matter how deep fakes do it, where they're starting to fake, you know, politicians and celebrities, you could still tell it's not really real versus you could see my expression. That's really hard to fake you know, and, and, and hand gestures and things like that. And, and just the, the way the human mind works, it's still hard for artificial intelligence to, to fake that and to do it quite that authentically. So forever, this will be one of the most sustainable and monetizable skills 
for the rest of our lives. And also the fact of learning to speak authentically on camera means that the benefits of that confidence and that authenticity spill out into all areas of your life. So I, I, I got, I went off, I went off script here talking about the, the, the tips for making the, the video structures. Let me, let me get back on script here. So the beginning of the video, like I said, even though I don't do scripting of my videos, like I don't go, okay, I'm going to say these exact five points in this exact order. I, I do come up with basically, this is what I'm going to talk about. And I might, I might even have three points I want to say, but I've learned over time, gosh, more than three points. I mean, I, I could always look at notes. Sometimes you'll see me looking at notes and I think that's okay too. Your, your readers, your, your viewers don't mind when you glance down and says, and the next really important point I want to bring up is this. I think it's okay to do that. But the fact of authentic videos means that you can be more almost like you're channeling some kind of spirit. Now, I don't mean literally spiritual channeling. I don't mean that. But it's almost like when you are alive, really connected to your authentic expression, it's almost like some spirit is speaking through you that you're not planning every word or even every point. And therefore, you can go off tangents like I do, which actually makes the video interesting. But uh, <laughs> let me keep bringing myself back to the intro. That is the only part, if you're going to plan out more carefully, that's the only part I would consider planning out. The intro and then the ending. Okay, so the intro, uh, there are many different ways as you like, if you, if you end up taking my course or if you end up watching how I do it or how other people, how other good speakers do it, you can start taking notes. How are they introducing the video? How are they starting out in the first 30 seconds, but even in the first three seconds, how are they starting out? Now, I'm not talking about the videos that have a cool video logo because I don't have a cool video logo. You know, like, you know, georgecal.com. You know, I, I don't have that stuff. I just start talking, okay? But you can notice the people who start talking, how are they interesting in the first three seconds? And then, and then the first 10 seconds, and then the first 30 seconds. How are they, take notes, really. Watch your favorite speakers. You know, whoever your favorite speakers are, how are they interesting in the, in the beginning of, 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 of their talk, right? Sometimes they start with a story. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes they'll, uh, I'm not a very good storyteller. Now you might disagree with me. I don't know, but I'm, I don't. I don't really tell stories that often. I, I I know that's something I could work on. I have lots of you know, rest of my life to work on that. But the, my storytelling is basically I. The simplest way I say it is, I've noticed that a lot of people think in this way. I mean, that's not even storytelling. I think maybe it's maybe my story, my version of it, is to say, you know, a client asked me about this, or the other day I was working with a client and we th this happened. So that's kind of the way I start with a story, but starting with a question is something that I often do. I, you know, I'll, I'll say things like um, a really important question that I've been asked is this, or have you ever considered how this works or why we, or why we do this, or have you ever considered how to achieve that goal or how to solve that problem? So question is also a good way to start. And then uh, something I love starting with also is a controversial thought controversial idea um, because it gets people go, wait, I disagree with you or wait, is that, that's not how you, so a controversial idea I might say is I really dislike marketing funnels and I'll tell you why, right? So I messed up because you, because you might, oh, I've been trained in marketing funnels. What are you talking about? Everyone says marketing funnels, right? Let me tell you why, you know, so, so I might start with that and I back it up or I might say, I might be, I love doing myth busting videos too. So I might start with saying, just about everybody thinks that marketing is about this, or just about everybody thinks that you could use this for any topic. Dog training is about this, right? So those are different ways of starting. So observe how your favorite videos do it, basically. So then you can plan out your intro. I think that's that's the best sustainable advice I can give you, right? Give you enough work for the rest of your life, right? You could keep studying and then trying out. And then the ending, like I said, is also important. Now, one thing I don't do, you'll notice which I get really annoyed by is, all right, before we go on, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, you know, smash that like button, uh, <laughs> et cetera. That's what I don't do because, well, I know for sure I'm not getting as many likes and comments and subscribes by not saying that, but I just get annoyed when people say that. So I don't want to do the golden rule. I don't want to do that to others, even though I'm falling on my own sword and not getting as many likes. I do trust that our ideal audience 
And that's part of why we do authentic videos. The people who are willing to watch us without editing are our true fans. And our true fans are the most sustainable fans. And the true fans are the ones who spread the word like wildfire. So I'm always trying to build a true fan audience. I am careful. I'm actually careful not building a mass audience. I don't want millions of followers. First of all, I don't want that many emails and that many comments to sort through. I don't. I mean, this, this past week, in fact, I was just on a, on a sort of a joint venture. Where there were 64 other um, marketing experts. We all did a joint venture. And I was exhausted this past week because I had so many new subscribers. I checked out some of their profiles. Most of them were not ideal for me, honestly. Right? You know, so getting lots of, and, and then I get more emails and questions that are not really relevant. It's like, oh my gosh, what an exhausting, and I couldn't. So it's like, I don't want to be famous. I want to just grow at a very gradual, sustainable pace with true fans all along the way. So the ending, as I was about to say, is, and I'll end this video. My God, this is getting too long. So the ending of a video, you might also want to carefully think that through. What is your style of ending? So I find the style that I'd like to end on when I remember to do it, I need to be more careful about it. But when I remember to do it, I kind of bless people and I say, um, you know, I wish you well. I, I hope the rest of you. And I try to like say some kind of well wishes based on what I just said. So maybe if I'm talking about anti, my anti marketing funnel philosophy, I'll say, I wish you well in creating a truly organic and authentic journey for your clients, something like that. Have a wonderful day, something like that. So, so that's one way of ending it. But a lot of people end it by saying, um, you know, people want, uh, you know, a really clever way of doing it, especially good for getting more algorithm uh, for your channel, is to invite them to watch another video. And you, you should have, like I said, this would take planning. You would have already planned what's the next video from you, from your channel that they should watch that's relevant. And you would therefore say, hey, you know what, if you, if you, if you thought this was good, you should also watch my other video that where I talk more specifically about this aspect of the marketing fund or whatever you're talking about. This aspect of dog training that's related to what I just said, you should watch that video and there will be a link below to watch that. And video, video platforms like YouTube love this because if you watch if the video viewer watches one video and then another video from the channel, YouTube goes, great, we're going to put more of your videos in front of that person going forward. So that's another clever way of ending. But I'll end the video by saying this. Again, you have plenty of work ahead of you by simply studying how your favorite speakers end their videos. And then you could experiment with trying out different styles and see what feels really good to you that you want to try out. So I hope this is helpful.